Hi folks, in this tutorial we are going to be looking at painting this Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas period radiation suit. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I am applying a thin coat of Filthy Brown from Vallejo all over the miniature and I have primed this with a light grey primer to allow the best coverage for the yellow paint. And being a yellow paint, you're probably going to require lots of thin coats with this. I'd thin it down to the point where you're probably looking to get two to three thin coats with this. With yellow paints, you're much better off doing lots of thin coats than trying to get everything done in one to two coats. It's just a matter of being patient and taking your time. After three or four thin coats of the filthy brown, the radiation suit should look something like this. The next step is to add some shadows to this radiation suit. We're also going to be doubling this up and allowing this to generate some weathering and general grimy effects onto the material. To do this, I have taken some Wildwood contrast paint from King's Workshop and very heavily thinned it down to pretty much a wash consistency. And I'm going to be quite liberal and apply this all over the miniature, being careful that it doesn't pull too much. If it does pull, it's not the end of the world, it will just add to a more of a staining effect. And the reason that I'm using the contrast paint rather than a traditional wash is that the contrast paint sticks more to the flat surfaces rather than just being a straight recess wash, which will give us that more grimy and old appearance on the yellow suit. With this wash and staining effect, make sure that you give it plenty of time to dry before you move on to the next step of painting the miniature. As an optional step, you can use some of the Wildwood contrast paint neat from the pot in a more controlled effect into the darkest recesses and folds to allow for a darker shade or a more grimy weathered feel. I wouldn't do this too much but if you want to do it in random spots all over the miniature it will stop everything looking too samey and really lend to that weathered post-apocalyptic feel. With that additional step complete, the radiation suit should look something like this. The next step in painting this radiation suit is a bit of a neatening up stage. What I'm doing here is coming back in with the original filthy brown and I'm going to be coating up some of the flatter surfaces where I don't want the more grimy contrast paint to be sat. With this you don't have to thin it quite down as much as you did when initially laying on the paint. We are looking at more of a cover up and layering technique with this rather than a I'm trying to get the smoothest finish possible. So with this the trick is to just go around all of the model and go over all the ray surfaces leaving all the contrast paint in the recesses and any area where you want the radiation suit to be particularly grimy. And this can take a while but as with all yellow paints it's just a matter of being patient and taking your time. Next I'll be coming in with some Avalon Sunset from Games Workshop and for this I'll be focusing on a slightly smaller area than the filthy brown and focusing on areas where the light would hit, for example the top of his knee, his shoulders and his upper arms. And we're going to be starting building up the colour and the highlights with the yellow, leaving the darker tones into the shadows and recesses. As with the previous yellow colour, I recommend building this up in several thin coats. The nice thing about this is if you focus on a smaller area each time, you'll start to build up a lovely soft transition and blend between the two colours. And again, there's no secret to this, it is just a matter of taking time and being patient with the fact that yellow can be a bit of a pain in the backside to do. The last step in highlighting yellow on this radiation suit is to use some Yerio Yellow from Games Workshop and focusing on the raised areas, highlight all the ridges in the creases and folds of this radiation suit. You can also use it as a small area highlight on some of the more flatter areas like the bit of the waistcoat that's hanging down over the knee on the crouch position or the top of his knee. 
but this is just a matter of picking out a few bits and bobs you don't have to go all over but it's just enough so you can start to get that real bright yellow highlight as if that was the color when it was brand new but if you want to really focus on the gritty grimy nature then i would use this color quite sparingly Once you have picked out all the ridges that you want, and you may want to do a couple of thin coats with this, the yellow on the radiation suit will be complete. With the yellow areas of this suit now complete, we can start focusing in on some of the other details. The first on the list for this is the boots and the gloves, and these are in a grey silvery colour in the reference artwork. So to start out with, I'm coming in with Corvus Black from Games Workshop and I've thinned this down about 50-50 with water and applied a couple of thin coats. And although Corvus Black is named a black, it is actually a very, very dark grey, which gives us a nice base colour to work up from. Once the base coat of Corvus Black has dried, I am then coming in with some Scape and Black Tinge once again from Games Workshop. And with this, I'm focusing on painting the majority of the boots and the gloves, leaving the Corvus Black into the recesses and the folds to be acting as a shadow colour. We're looking to get about 90% of the boots with this, and if you can, try to focus it onto the raised and upper surfaces to increase the contrast and difference between shadows and highlights on these boots and gloves. As usual, I recommend thinning your paint quite heavily with water and building up this in thin layers rather than doing this in one thick coat. The advantage again of doing it in thin layers is you can build a nice subtle shade and transition of the two colours. The last stage in highlighting the gloves and boots on this radiation suit miniature is to use some Storm Vermin Fur from Games Workshop and to pick out all the raised ridges and large flat areas on the upper surfaces of the boots and the gloves. And this is just a matter of taking your time and if you thin this down a little bit you can create a nice transition. If not, don't worry, just go around and pick out all the ridges on the upper surfaces and you'd have a nice transition from the Corvus Black all the way up to the Storm Vermin Fur. The next step is to start painting in all the black buckles, straps and hoses on the radiation suit. And there's quite a few of these and I would recommend looking up some reference artwork. There's a nice picture on the Fallout Wiki for this radiation suit to give you an idea of where you want to paint these. And I'm using Vallejo model colour black here but you can use any black that you want. Pick your favourite, Abaddon black, scale colour black is entirely up to you. My advice for this step is to use a fine brush and to very carefully and very slowly with a thin down paint very carefully pick out the details that you want to be black using the tip of the brush. And don't worry if you go over or you go onto bits of the yellow that you didn't mean to. Everybody makes mistakes, myself included. The trick with this is just to wait till the model has dried and then to go back in with the base colour of the yellow and to neaten up any mistakes that you've made. The details on this radiation suit are quite fine and it's very easy to go onto the yellow with this black paint. So try and brace your hands against the table or the desk and focus on doing very small, very smooth motions with the tip of the brush. If you can, try and use the side of the brush rather than the tip of the brush itself on the straighter details such as this backpack hose. With the black areas painted in, the radiation suit should look something like this. And as you can see, it's coming on quite nicely. In the next step of this tutorial, I'll be focusing on the silver details on this miniature. And this extends to the hose on the back leading up from the helmet to the regulator on his back, the laser pistol and the silver reflective chrome of the helmet itself. 
the hose and the laser pistol we're going to be painting in a very traditional silver method but the reflective helmet uh, we're going to be introducing some alchemy paints from scale 75 and with this we're going to look at adding some blue green reflections into the silver helmet itself this looks closer to the reference artwork and adds a nice bit of eye-catching color variation to your silvers So to start this process out, I'm layering down a base coat of black metal from scale 75. I quite happen to like the scale 75 metallics because they have a really fine pigment, but you can use any dark silver that you'd like. I'd recommend thinning it with a little bit of water, but not as much as you would usually do, just enough to maintain that it flows off the brush, and then carefully base coat in the areas that you would like to be silver. In this I'm showing coating the top of the helmet and the rim around it where the joint seal connector would be. Just like with the black, if you make any mistakes with the silver area, don't worry, just wait until it dries and then come back in with the filthy brown yellow from the original step and cover up any mistakes made. This hose is quite finely detailed and is quite thin so I would recommend taking your time and don't worry if you make any little mistakes because they can be very easily touched up afterwards. Next I'll be coming in with some Emerald Alchemy from scale 75 and I've thinned this down quite heavily with water almost to a wash consistency, quite a heavy glaze consistency is probably the best way to describe this. And this is a greeny blue metallic colour that I'll be painting on to the bottom third of the helmet and this will be starting to give the impression of blue green chrome reflections and I really do recommend doing this quite thinly and applying a little bit waiting for it to dry and then applying the next bit it's quite strong in tone compared to the dark silver but with the building up of a couple of layers it can create a really nice difference and start to get some of that natural blue green reflections that you might see on this radiation suit, something like grass or a radiation pool being reflected in the silver of the helmet. The next step, once you are happy with the Emerald Alchemy, is to come in with some Cobalt Alchemy, once again from scale 75. This is a really nice blue metallic colour and just like the Emerald Alchemy I've thinned it down with quite a bit of water to sort of a thick glaze consistency. And with this I'm painting most of the rest of the helmet starting out by going over the line of the Emerald Alchemy with a wet brush feathering between the two and then painting specifically looking towards the back the top of the helmet where the light would catch the most and then about the middle third to the top half of the helmet. This is to sort of reflect the idea that there is a blue sky above and it's starting to give some colour into the silver as part of its reflections. Just like with the Emerald Alchemy, I really do recommend thinning this paint down and building it up till you get a finish that you're happy with. The last step on highlighting this silver radiation suit helmet is to use some white alchemy from scale 75. Now this is a really brilliant silver, almost to the point of white. And this is perfect for us to add a reflex highlight into the colours that we've already got going on here. Due to the shape of this helmet, this wants to be a sort of circle shaped reflex highlight. And what I'm doing is starting out in the middle and working my way outwards with the paint. I'm then using a clean damp brush to sort of feather out the connection between the Emerald Alchemy, the Cobalt Alchemy and the White Alchemy. And just like the previous steps, you want to take your time and slowly build up the colour. If you're unsure exactly where to put this highlight, then I would recommend using a light or a torch above the miniature and have a look where the reflective shines the most and then paint that in by hand. Once we are happy with the amount of white alchemy applied, the helmet should look something like this and is now finished. The next step is to work on this AE7 Fallout 3 and New Vegas pattern laser pistol. 
I have started out with a base coat of black metal from scale 75 but you can use your favourite dark metal for this purpose. The aesthetic that I am going for with this laser pistol is that of an aged, weathered and grimy feel. And to do this I am doing an all over wash of Nile Oil from Games Workshop. And I have put it onto the palette so that I can control the application of the wash over the silver areas. And I would recommend to try to be as careful as you can as to not get it onto the yellow radiation suit. And don't worry, it's not a problem if you do, just wait for it to dry and then go back over it with your base coat. You may also want to take this opportunity to apply the wash to any other silver areas of the model, such as the oxygen hose running from the waist pack to the helmet. Make sure that you leave the null oil plenty of time to dry before progressing to the next step. As you can see here, I have also painted the metal grayling and the half submerged T45D power armor helmet. The next step is to add some grunge and grime to the laser pistol. And to do this, I'll be applying another wash, this time Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. Now this is a nice medium brown wash and once again, like the Null Oil, we're going to be applying liberally all over. Now I'll recommend putting this on a palette first, so you can have a bit more control and going straight from the pot. You may also want to paint in any other silver details, such as the T45D Power Armor Helmet or the Metal Grill on the basing as extra detail. And once again, just like the Null Oil, Make sure that you give this wash plenty of time to dry before you move on to the next stage of the miniature. The last step on painting the steel of this laser pistol is to come in with some heavy metal from scale 75. Now this is a medium bright silver and this is similar to Ironbreaker or Runefang steel from Games Workshop. And with this I'm looking to do twofold with the metal areas. With some of the more piping shaped areas, I'm going to do it more of a mostly covering it with the silver paint. And with some of the more square and boxy areas, I'll be doing a tapping and dabbing motion with the side of the brush to represent more like chips and scratches. In this variation of approach will give us some nice different weathered feels to the paint. The medium toned silver that we're using will appear a lot brighter as the washes will have done a lot of work in making the metal look dingy and dark. I'm also using this silver to pick out the highlight areas on the power armor helmet and the steel grate on the floor behind the scientist. Next, we'll be painting the barrel of the laser pistol. And to do this, I'm giving this a nice even base coat of Caliban Green from Games Workshop. And this is a perfect colour match, I think, to the reference artwork you see for the laser pistols on both the wiki and in the games themselves. Now, like all acrylic paints, I recommend that you thin this down with a little bit of water and apply a couple of thin layers over the area that you want to be green. As an optional step, you can do a highlight on this green barrel of the laser pistol by adding a little bit of warpstone glow into the Caliban green. I'd be careful not to add too much, not to go into an any stronger ratio than two thirds Caliban green to one third warpstone glow. And I would use this paint thinned quite heavily with a bit of water and I'd use it to focus on hard edges and areas where the light would catch the most on the barrel of the pistol. The Caliban Green is an almost identical match to the reference artwork, so I wouldn't try to change the colour too much and push it on this small barrel. Especially at the scale of the miniature that we are looking at, it will very drastically change the colour of the barrel if you apply too much of this highlight. The last step in painting this laser pistol is to pick out all the yellow details. Now these will be the hose that runs from the power cell to the emitter 
and to the warning markings on the side of the barrel. If you don't feel confident doing the warning markings on the barrel, that's absolutely fine. At this scale, they'll be very small and quite difficult to do anyway. So you may just want to focus on the hose and maybe power cell. To do this, I have thinned the filthy brown down with a little bit of water and using a fine detail brush, using the edge of the point, carefully running the brush along the ridges where the hose runs from the power cell to the emitter. You may choose to neglect painting the power cell as due to its position it's actually very difficult to get to and is cast in shadow. If you can access it, brilliant, but you may find that leaving it silver will be just as fine considering where the miniature is posed. And just like with the other steps, I recommend thinning this down with a little bit of water to ensure that the paint smells smoothly off your brush. Next, I'm moving on to the warning markings on the barrel. Now these are two vertical thin yellow lines running on the back third of the barrel near to the handle. And what I recommend doing with this is having a very fine tip on your brush and thinning the paint down with a little bit more water than normal and practice running straight lines down your palette. Once you feel comfortable with doing the vertical motion you can move it onto the model and move it in a clean single motion either from top to bottom or from bottom to top. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Try to leave a small gap between them as you go, but don't worry if it ends up being a thick single line. You can always go back in with the Caliban green and the silver details to pick out any things that you've made a mistake on. Just like here, where I make a mistake on the silver and go back in and pick it out. There's no real secret or trick to painting these lines. It does just come with practice and having a steady hand and not being afraid to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you can always let it dry, paint over with your base color and give it another go. This is one of the advantages of keeping our paint nice and thin. And with that, this advanced radiation suit is now complete. If you want to know how I base this video, why not click the link at the top of this video or in the description below to go to my Painting Wasteland Bases tutorial. If you like this tutorial and you made it to the end, a big thank you and why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge and you get further videos just like this one in your newsfeed. Thanks for watching folks and I'll see you in the next one.